The start point when using Decision is the library. Here you'll find a list of all your previously created models. Let's take a look at creating a new model. As you can see from the side nav, we're now in the Define section, which contains four tabs, Name, Outcome, Variables and Confirm. Let's give our model a name and a short description. Under Outcome, we define the question we want to answer, along with what the possible answers could be. For this example, we want to know if a refund should be given. We also need to choose if the outcome is a numerical or categorical. If it's numerical, we can specify a lower, upper and incremental value. But for this example, the answer is either going to be yes or no, which is categorical and we can simply select yes, no from the commonly used options here, although you can always create your own custom values too. Next, we must define the variables that will help answer our question. Our first variable will be how big is the item. This will be a categorical value, and we can select small, medium, large from the predefined list. We'll save this variable and add another one. You simply need to repeat this process to add as many variables as you like, but we only really need four to answer our question. Having added all our variables, we can do a final check on what we have defined. If certain variable values always result in a certain outcome, they can be set up as a rule. For example, if have they returned the item equals no, then the answer to our question, should I give a refund, will also always be no. Before teaching decision, we need to give a single example for each potential outcome. This improves the accuracy and minimizes unwanted bias in the predictions. For our example, we need to create two samples, one for yes and one for no. Let's select the variable values to give a yes, and then adjust them for a no. We can now start teaching. On this page, Decision gives a set of variable values and asks us whether this should result in a yes or no outcome. The value shown here would result in a yes, so we select yes, create sample, and we get a confirmation the sample has been created. Notice how the values have automatically updated to create the next sample. These new values would result in a no. Again, we get the confirmation and the values are changed. We continue doing this until we've created enough samples to provide accurate results. Typically, this means creating 15 to 20 samples. Let's move on to the calibrate section. Here the roles are reversed. Now we change the variable values to see what answers decision gives us. You can see it thinks the answer to this set of values would be yes with a confidence of 86.6% and below it shows us the nearest samples it used to reach this prediction. Adjusting a value changes the prediction. If we disagree with the prediction, we can adjust it and save the correction. Sometimes you might end up with a combination of values that matches a rule you set up earlier, in which case the rule is shown. Ordinarily, we would cycle through 20 or more different value combinations to more thoroughly test our model, but for now, let's move on to samples. The samples tab simply shows a list of every sample you created while setting up and teaching your model. These can be adjusted or deleted if necessary. The final page allows you to adjust how your model is weighted, although we recommend leaving it in the default settings. Clicking Finish takes us back to the library page, where we can now see our new model at the top of the list. If we select a model, you can choose to clone, edit or delete it. You can also view the prediction history, which lists every prediction this model has ever made.